Let's get into it. Let's start. Let's do this. Okay. So what we're looking at here, this is the basic screen that you're going to be looking at when you first open up the program. It defaults to 140 BPM for the tempo. It's adjust the tempo. You just simply can click on it and slide your mouse up and down and you notice it's going to change the tempo. Or you double click. You can type in what tempo that you want. So it, it depends what you want to do. Or hover over it and use your mouse wheel. Scroll up and down to change that. If you've seen my videos, you already know my catchphrase. The first thing we got to do is set the tempo. So now let's just look around at what it is that we've got here. Yours might look a little bit different. I've set mine up so it starts me off with a totally blank slate. Because a lot of times, and what you guys will probably see, there's some junk in here that is instruments I never use. So I just have mine set up where it starts me off with nothing. I got a blank slate. Yours, you're probably going to have a couple of things here. But what this is that you're looking at is called the editor window. And you can get to that by clicking show high editor window. And what you just saw, you got a little preview of when I clicked away from it. Piano roll. Well, you actually have some instruments and things in the editor window. You can open up your piano roll window. You can actually draw or record what you want to put in it. Uh, my favorite beat and bass line editor. Some people use this, some people don't. I guess it's kind of controversial if you look at the forums. I use it. Reason why is because if you're making a bass line or a drum beat pattern, why well, copy and paste that all those times? I just do it in the beat and bass line editor. And the way that that works, it puts it in a block. So you can just click and add as many blocks as you want. We're going to start by just, we're going to make just something simple. This isn't going to be showing off skills or anything. This is just a super simple how you go about using it and making a beat. So first off, this is my workflow, so I'm gonna it's gonna be based on what I would do. You might do things slightly different. What I would usually do, I usually will start by adding a beat and baseline editor and coming up with whatever the main theming of the song is gonna be. So let's do that. When you do that, you just simply click here and it creates a beat and baseline editor. Then, notice how when I click here, it puts this little blue box. That is your beat baseline loop. We can click these and add as many as you want. Oh, and you know what? You put one somewhere you don't want, you can click it with your middle mouse button to get rid of it. Or if you don't have a middle mouse button for some reason, like I don't know, I don't remember if Macs do this. Something about Macs I remember from when I used to use an Apple computer that I think it did have a middle mouse button, I think. So you would just simply right click it and cut it. Either way, while well, this to get this to digress, that's kind of another reason too why I like LMMS. This you can have it on as many computers you want, different operating systems, just easily bring over those project files. Super simple across all your computers without a problem. So now that we've brought in our beat baseline editor. I'm going to start with making a drum pattern. This might not necessarily be your creative process, but for demonstration purposes, we're going to do that. As you can see, we're into my samples window. So let's just quickly go over this so you see what I'm doing when I'm doing that. Up here, this little computer screen with a squiggly line in it. Instrument plugins. This is all the different instruments that there are. So all of these are uh, software synthesizers that it comes with. Two I just want to highlight real quick. Audio file processor. You're going to see in a second. You're going to use this a lot. This is how you use samples like wave samples of drums or what have you. It's always going to be an audio file processor. The second one I want to bring out for now is Vestige. I believe this is only available in the Windows version. I don't think it's on the Linux version. It's been a little while since I've used the Linux version. I've had to fire up my Linux computer that I do all my recording on and check that. Because these days I've been using this one for making beats. But this vestige, it allows you to open up a VST plugin. 
a quick note on that. You had to also, when you open up VST plugins, which will be a later video, it does have to be 64 bit or 32 bits. You have to just pay attention to that, that it matches your computer or which version you have. So, the next little button here pretty self explanatory. It's a little headphone logo. My projects, it just lets you open up whatever projects that you have in the past. My samples, which is where we're going to be using to get the drum patterns. This is all the samples. I have more than you will because I've just added my own samples. These are things I've had from other programs and stuff I've paid for, by the way. And there, you can just load them in here. So that's what that is. My presets. This is where all the presets for the instruments are going to be. There's some that comes with it that other people made and then up here above where it says factory files. That's the ones you've made. On this computer, I just got one. My other computer, there's more that I've done, but that's what the difference is. Above factory files is ones that you made and saved. My home, this literally is just like your browsing files on your computer if you want to do that. In my computer, that's self-explanatory browser files. Back on topic, when you want to go to the My Sample window, if you want to bring in drums or really any sample that you have, we're just going to use the D-Shine Trapaholic kit just because it's the first one I see. No particular reason. You just navigate through these folders and find what you want to use. Go to 808 Kicks. We'll just do that with Trapaholic Kick 12. Drag it into the Beat Baseline Editor. And when you drag it into that window, you're going to see you have this line here. And you have these square blocks. Something to explain with Beat Baseline Editor is two different ways you can go about entering the notes. You can either click like this, put them in that way. What's going to happen is each one of these is one measure. so. It's going to be four quarter notes like this. Eighth notes if you do two per each beat or whatever. I don't know what that was. That's like a some 80s hip hop or something. The way that I typically do it myself, instead of using this, right click, open in piano roll. And that brings your piano roll window. Over here where you see these keys, the vertical axis, they use a big fancy term. This is what this is what note, what pitch value. So that's basically just what pitch that you want it to be. You can pitch stuff up and down however you prefer to do that. It depends on what you want to do basically. Left to right, this axis, this part here, this is all about the timing of it. So there's two ways. Well, actually, there's three ways. Let me put it that way. One way that you could do it is that you can actually click the record and put like you could draw the notes like this. So I didn't pay any attention to what notes are. So as you can see, from left to right, that's just the, the timing. So like what beat that the note comes in on, and then up and down is the pitch. The second way that you could do it, regular old computer keyboard. The way that, that would work, you just simply hit record. And also in my version, your version, you might not have to do this. I have to turn on the metronome. And then what you could do is on your keyboard, each key on the keyboard corresponds to a note. Each row of the keyboard corresponds. So this is C. Up here are the black keys. This is an octave below. Same thing, C. With black keys. So the way that that would look is like this. We 
real quick this is just a quick workflow thing you might do it differently if you record something like I did I just listen for four clicks on the metronome so that way I could kind of hear the beat and the tempo if you want to move these notes around you could just simply click on it and drag it left to right or up and down too so if you if you record something that is not quite where you want it you could do that so you can use this little tools up here this little uh, square that's like dotted lines this is how you select it so how I just did that you can select all those notes or just some of them this right here did what that looks like a to me it looks like a crayon that's the draw mode then this one here is eraser mode so that's what those buttons are so those it's pretty self-explanatory draw mode is like how I showed you before you click on this grid and it's gonna add a note eraser common sense is gonna remove the note select it lets you pick them so when you're in draw mode you can click on the note and slide them around and if you selected all of them like I just did you can slide all of them that have been selected I'm gonna actually choose to keep that little baseline I just came up with what I'm doing right now this is something I noticed somebody in the comments my bad guy I forgot what your name was but I want to address it somebody actually questioned why I slide notes to touch each other and he was kind of pointing out something that you could do to adjust that I don't want to get too into it because this is just the basics this is it's a little bit more advanced what we were talking about but the reason why I drag the notes into each other is because that gives it more of like what you would call a legato effect it means that the, the notes are smoother and more connected and also it gives you these weird little clicks in between the notes when the notes are not drawn out legato and smooth and connected so that's the reason why I do that you know you can use some of the filters, which don't even worry about that if you are not familiar with this yet. But that's what I do later on when we get to all of that. I'll discuss that. This is just the beginning. So you clicked on this if you want to play it back. This is a pretty low bass line. So let me show you something else that you could do. See, that's a little too low. Select these notes again. put it in B flat because it's cool so drag those up and now you can change the pitch I don't like that I'm gonna move it again let's do a we'll take we'll keep that so now let me show you something See how this beat baseline looks like this? Delete it. Click it again, you know, so to change the shape. This is reflecting. This is giving you the full four measures that you've just recorded. The reason why I like the beat baseline window, say I want this to repeat for a long time. I don't have to do anything like copy and paste. I can either just click and it's going to add those four measures. Or what I like to do drag it out like that and that's going to extend it as long as you want you can extend it to okay, so whatever we've want. got our bass line laid down let's add some drums to it so this is much the same that you've seen already we're just going to put in a little snare first so you can see what that looks like snares you click on the sample, they'll play a little example so you know what it sounds like. Let's do this one. Same exact thing you've already seen. Click left click, I mean right click, I'm sorry, right click, open in piano roll, that's the way I like to do it. Or if you want, you could click the notes and draw them. I prefer recording because I just like to be able to, for my creative process, it works better. So let me show you something different. You see up here you have play, record like we did before that when you hit that it let us type in the notes and it recorded it. Stop, you already know what stop does. If you don't know what stop means, give up. Just give up on music. This button right here, you notice it's the record, but it has like a little play button. This lets you play the record while you're hearing what else is is going on.
built up this off beat. So remember, it's, this off beat not a big deal. You can find it and slide it back. This is this one. So I can just slide it over. Hopefully my voice is coming out over the beat. <laughs> okay, so. Let's put some hi-hats on it. And a hi-hat sound that you like. This one. This is kind of dated, to be honest with you. And again, I guess maybe like Trap 808. Maybe it's not dated. That's probably not going to go out of style for a few more years. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the same thing you've already seen. That's to drive the point home. Click on here to let you get it. You're going to hear it while you're recording. We used to have a wireless keyboard. I, I just like the wireless in my, in, so I can like move it around. That's just a, that's just a tip. It's got nothing to do with the program. But you guys can use whatever kind of keyboard that you want. I don't care. Oops. Okay, so if you want to make a track beat, we already know that you got to have the hi-hats a little bit faster than that. So, how do you do that? Okay, check this out. Up here in this window, magnifying glass. This is how you zoom. Hover your mouse wheel over it, and you can scroll up and down to increase or decrease the zoom. Or click on it, just click on what zoom factor that you want. 200% is enough. It's just going to make it, as you can see, it's closer it makes the scale of these notes bigger. Q, quantize. Quantize means it means it locks the notes to a specific grid. Quantize feature goes up super duper high. It goes all the way up to 192. Up here you got whole notes, half notes, quarter notes, eighth notes, sixteenths, thirty second, sixty fourths. You have one third, but that is, what would that be? I'm trying to think. Music brain. I think that would technically be like a half note triplet, which is rare. Six divided into six beats. Those would be quarter note triplets, I want to say, for six. Yeah, that would be quarter note triplets. Twelves, eighth note triplets, because that's 12 per measure. 24th, 16th note triplets. So this is triplets. So if you want to do triplets, you can. So, in fact, just for fun, let's do the triplets. Let's do some like cool triplet little patterns with the hi hats. I haven't done that in a while, so let's do that. So the way that that will work is you noticed this grid; it just changed. If you notice, in each beat, there's now six little subdivisions in here that you can put notes in instead of just. Let me go back. Instead of just four, like you saw here for 16 notes. So, let's go to 24. I'm going to show you guys what this looks like. I think it's kind of a pain in the butt. You have to, it's, it's weird. You have to like record something there for it to go to that value size. Whoops, it's not see what I mean? Like you gotta Oh yeah, there's something to point out. When you click on these notes, the next note that you draw while you're in draw mode defaults to being the same size as the note you just clicked. That's actually useful sometimes for things like if you're stacking chords. However, it can be annoying for when you're trying to draw rhythmic patterns. So just just be aware of that. 
which you saw me do right here for these little three notes. I just went in record mode and clicked to record a couple of notes so it would give me a nice neat note that goes into that size. You don't have to do that, I just do because I'm anal. So, pause. So, drawing all those six notes. We're going to click up here on this time bar where it says one, two, three, four. That's going to move the playhead over to this fourth measure so I can just hear this. Click play. See what I'm saying? So I just put a cool little triplet pattern in there. It says triplets are cool. Let's go to 48. So let's hover over that like I did. You just simply scroll up and down with your mouse wheel. Right here, we're going to do that too. You know what I'm saying? We're going to put 48 in there, guys, because it's cool. But like this, so it'll be something crazy. That's pretty cool, if I do say so myself. I usually put it back to 16th notes because that's the basic that I use. And that way it doesn't confuse me when I go to record mode next and wonder why it's quantizing it to triplets. So let's go back here and hear what we have so far to our edit window, if you remember that, if you've been paying attention. Hit play so we hear what we've got. Hang on. You notice something just happened there weird? Mine went back to 90 BPM. If that happens, don't be alarmed. Right click, remove song global automation. Then hit reset and it'll bring you back to the tempo you were at. What happens there, you might have accidentally put in an automation track or have an automation window open by accident. I do because the template that I have set up to start with has that. You guys don't really have to worry about it. If you guys don't go push in buttons, you should be fine with that auto happening every time like it does for me. But in case that does happen, that's why. You might have a window open that's telling it to be 90 BPM. So you just right click and then, like I did, remove song global automation and reset it to the previous tempo. So, back to the point. Pretty cool. Now, we need a melody. So I'm going to do something a little different. Usually the way I would do a melody, I would make a new ba beat baseline window and put a melody in it. But, just for demonstration purposes only. I'm going to do it a little different than how I normally would so you can see what something looks like. So I like to go to my presets and so you see what it looks like. We're going to go to Triple Oscillator. Which one is it? I think it's this one that I usually like to use to demonstrate this. So simply drag it directly into the editor window. Boom. It's there. But it's different. You see how instead of a colored rectangle, it's just this gray rectangle. You notice there's no way to drag this out because nothing's in it. Double click on it. It's automatically going to take you to the piano roll to record something. So once again, there's three different ways you can record and enter some notes. Like I showed you before, when you're in draw mode, you have this little crayon highlighted. You can draw notes in like this. You can record it with the keyboard like we did for the bass line and drums. Or, the way that's more natural to me, to do melodies. Because you can do things like chords and hitting more than one button at a time. Click on analog time. So actually there's two ways, so I'm going to show you both. We can either go here, this little piano button, MIDI settings, enable MIDI input. Click here, USB MIDI controller. Or, click on this little settings gear, MIDI, input, USB MIDI controller. I have a USB keyboard hooked up to my computer. That part's on you guys. It depends on if you guys have a MIDI keyboard, you can do that. If you don't, if you're interested in buying one to use this, pretty much any standard general MIDI compatible USB keyboard is going to work with this program. 
it is something to note though what I just showed you guys how to activate it you have to do that for each time you're recording something and also I'm going to show you you have to deactivate it after you're done recording it so for that that's one of the workflow things that I know some people might not get and that could be a bit annoying but it does have a purpose because once you get to the level like me where you have a rack of keyboards behind you you might have more than one keyboard or MIDI controller hooked up to your computer that you want to do for different things. All right, so let's do this melody thing. So I got it hooked up. Now when I play at my keyboard here, at my desk, stuff is happening. So, what I wanted to show you too, when you go to triple oscillator, when you click on the analog times, that's the name of the preset, you see something that looks like this. You got some options. This is how you can edit the sounds in this particular synth. And you can do this for all of those synthesizers that are in that window. You can go in and edit things. As simple as that. Just play around with it. You know, there's other people that can better explain how soft synths work, work than I can. I will at some point delve a little deeper into this, but when you're ready to edit these presets and make your own or just make adjustments, this is how you would do it. Let's do that. Alright. So like before, you can click this button and record while you're going. The difference when you do it on the beat baseline, I'm, I'm sorry, the editor window versus beat baseline is it's not going to repeat. It's just going to keep recording and scroll all the way to the end of the song. I don't find that to be that efficient, but you can do it. Me, I just do the regular record when I use stuff in the editor window. I think me hitting the keyboard is messing with the mic, so I apologize that there's little like bump sounds going on in here. Let's come up with a melody. First off, we gotta find out what key, because the samples I have for the little kick drum, they're not in C. In fact, you know what? Let's talk about that for a second. It's worth talking about. It's kind of advanced, but it's something that is, is worth talking about here because it might confuse you guys. When you're doing samples, it's weird because it defaults the samples to A. A is the middle note that the sample is going to begin on. What, the, what that means, to try to explain it basic, when you select the note A, that's where the sample plays unaltered. It's not pitched up or down. Any notes above A, the sample is pitched up. The way that this goes about doing that, it speeds up the sample. So when you get really high, the samples get shorter. When you get lower, they take longer to play. That's the way that this goes about doing it, which is good for sound quality. That's the best way to do it for the sound quality. But it's something to, to note. You know, you... you you might run into that if you're trying to do like chords way up high. The notes might not last long enough to play through a meaningful amount of a note. Now the thing about them starting on A, you actually can pitch shift it. You see this little white grayish colored block? You move this, it's going to start, it's going to transpose it. It's going to make it so that this sample starts on this key instead of A. So it's starting on B flat instead of A. You can also do the same exact thing as synths. It's the same thing. You can transpose it. The difference is synthesizers is creating the sound. It's not speeding it up or slowing it down. So the reason you don't want to transpose is to legitimately transpose it. The word transpose is something you're not familiar with because you don't like play piano. Don't worry about it. Just just understand that, that, that white block when you click it, it makes it a different note. For each key that you're going to press on your keyboard. 
It's also useful too if you want to move things up and down an octave, so there's that too. Versus. So, there's that. Let's come up with our melody. Also important probably that you're the right instrument went okay. Take two. We fix up a couple of things. I was a little sloppy there. So you see if you want to have that longer how I have to click copy and then paste it in. Click copy, click here to make a new uh, sequence and paste it in. That's the reason I do beat baseline instead of that because you just do that. So to demonstrate, drag that in like you saw before with the others. Right click, hit copy, go to my beat baseline window. Right click, hit I mean paste. And it's going to go in there. Pretty cool, huh? Good trick to have. I'm just going to get rid of this because I don't need it. Drag it over. Do that. Now let's go back in and edit this synthesizer a little bit. that then we'll add just something else out here we'll add one more instrument so that, that way we can see what that's going to look like that way also we'll have something we can mix so I can show you a little bit of that that sounds good let's do that scary bell midi input controller whoops that's it we clicked off now you got to go here and turn this one off. Oh, looks like it already is off, so we're good to go. But you just had to do that after when you want to switch to recording a different instrument. A little annoying, I know, but like I said, there is a purpose for that once you really, really get into this that you'll learn. thing too I like the beat bass line it actually is pretty uh, comprehensive and smooth to hit this button and record it so you can kind of layer stuff getting into this so let's do one last sound on there I guess 
this time we're gonna do a sound from here. I'm gonna use one of the points I've recorded. Let's do like. Same thing, let's make sure that one's off so it doesn't interfere. that happen not for nothing as you saw there it spilled over a little bit it gives you a little bit of a window of time that if you want to extend that uh loop you could do that if you hit it on hit something on the down meat again once you get a little annoying but it has a purpose you just have to be aware of it and it's not a big deal so i can just highlight it and drag it back to beat one it's not a problem Something else I want to do, because I might not want that to come in the entire song. Let me copy that. While you're in the beat bass line window, hit this. It's going to give you a brand new beat bass line in your editor window. And I can copy it here. That I can go back here. Clear all notes. And then now I have a totally new beat bass line with what I've recorded. So I can add that in when I want it to be there so it's not the whole time. Well, I'm going to leave this one at this, so I'll just play it to hear what we have. And now you can balance out the sound at this point. So that little synth there is kind of loud. We're going to turn that down. Right here, there's just volume and pain. It's a little too loud, too. Turn that down a little bit. It's a good mix. It's a little too loud. Oops, the hatchet snare is a little too loud. Let's bring that down. Let's pan this. This lets you turn it to the right speaker or left. So that's panning, so you can do a little bit of that. Yeah, I was in mono mode, I think. Neat. And we'll leave it at that for now. You guys are not asleep by now, but that just was the basics. So I didn't talk about a whole lot. I didn't want to get too out of hand. I wanted to keep this to the basics to show you what to click, how to get around, and how to just make something basic, something simple. So hopefully this is a good start. I will continue to add these and kind of go into more features and more things they could do. But this is the beginning, so this information I gave you should be enough that you can go in and make a basic beat. And it can help you a little bit with seeing what it is that I'm doing in some of my cookout videos and whatnot. So, I actually will make another one of these, but I want to put it up to you guys. What is it that you want to see? What questions do you have for me to talk about for the next one? And I'll try to make sure I incorporate those in there. So for now, if you guys made it through this whole long thing, I appreciate it. Keep watching. This channel has been it's been neglected a little bit. That's on me. And we're gonna fix that this year. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. Peace out, love y'all. The power is back.